Hi, I'm Eleanor Silverstein, and um, I am the cousin of Moshe Feldenkrais, and it's not something I say very easily, so that came out a little bit with some strain, but um, I would like to share with you a couple of stories of the time that I had the opportunity to live with him in the early 1980s. And uh, there was this time when John Grinder and Richard Bandler, the creators of NLP, otherwise known as Neuro Linguistic Programming, flew to his place in Tel Aviv on Frug Street and came to visit. Moshe was so excited that they were visiting because he admired them and he adored them. And I remember sitting like a almost little mouse on the side of the room, listening to the two of them talk with him, the excitement in their voices and the enthusiasm and expressions on Moshe's face. You know, normally he was alone, not so many visitors, and he had a quietness and subduedness unless there was something really stimulating. They really had him stimulated and that caught my interest. I'm like, what's the big deal? I know Moshe talked a lot about NLP. He talked a lot about Ericksonian hypnosis. As a matter of fact, when I asked him one day, I said, you know, Moshe, what do, when I graduate, is there anything else I should do afterwards? He goes, you know, if you do anything, study NLP with John Grinder and Richard Bandler with my friends. And then he said, study Est with my friend Werner Erhardt and study Ericksonian hypnosis. You don't need anything else. So of course, by the time I graduate, I was already on to them. <laughs> but this was my meeting, sitting in the room, watching them. And at first it was this social opening, a prelude, a welcoming, a talking back and forth. And you could see it almost like a dance in the rhythm of energy in the air. Until I hear them ask, Moshe, now that they felt they had him softened up, like anybody could think they could have Moshe so softened up. They felt they had him softened up where one sat at one side of the room and the other sat at the other. And I knew nothing about NLP, but my goodness, was it obvious. I studied uh, uh, animal sciences and animal behavior. So it was pretty clear what was going on in the room. It's two terriers on each side, one terrier on each side of the other animal. And so it was Moshe. Would you allow us to bring in the Feldenkrais method into NLP? And they didn't use this word, but they used something like that to basically NLP eyes the Feldenkrais method. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be laughing. Because Moshe really gave it thought. And he's like, and then he starts to talk. And so they talk some more. And then they ask him again. And this goes on back and forth until Richard Bandler he had a big beard, stocky body, more passionate in his way of being. It's like, Moshe, I'm trying to ask you something. Would you please consider allowing us to take this that you taught, that your work, and to put it into NLP? And Moshe's responding back with, basically, I would love to, but you just don't get it. I might have leaned forward in my chair. I knew what he meant because basically for 40 minutes before he was actually interviewing them while they thought they were talking to him. He was looking to see how much they understood, understood the method. And they did understand the method 
but more so they appreciated the method and they wanted the Feldenkrais method to be known everywhere, to be understood and incorporated and the way of the Feldenkrais method to be incorporated. They weren't gonna steal the work, they wanted to help the work grow. But Moshe said, basically, you can't, because it can't be turned into NLP, because it's not a thing. It's not something you could hold in your hand. It's a thinking. It's a way of living. It's a way of being. It's not something that you can take a technique as beautiful as NLP and take this method and do that because what you'll be doing is limiting and narrowing what it is that I'm trying to teach. But that's not all. So those two men are very bright. They got what he said. So they said, we got it, right? But we think we could take a component of it and use it in NLP. Very smart, good businessmen. But above all, it was their love and adoration for Moshe. They wanted to take the Feldenkrais work and help more people with it. It was beautiful. I, they, they were so pleading. I was, I was on their side in my mind. I wanted it to happen, but I knew it wasn't going to happen because he didn't want anybody to take a part, one part of it, and make it the thing, because that's not the thing. It's, it's a philosophy. It's a thinking. It's a way of living. It's a way of enacting your life. It's the way you are that's different for each human being, which is why you can't take a technique and technique eyes something that is different for each person. So he wanted it. And he let them know he wished that they could. But it would narrow it and limit it. Of which point, Richard Bandler didn't do so well with that response. And so he kind he got more, it looked like from my 20 something year old perspective, he was desperate. His voice got louder. He was more strained. He was leaning forward. He was stressed. And it looked like he was pleading. And I understood, I wished, that they could have had it. Moshe had so much compassion saying, I know, I wish I could. But I just have to say, I can't have you do that because you'll turn it into something that it isn't. Even if I give you permission to take a part of it. Richard, so, so John Grinder just sat back in his chair maybe defeated, just the animal behavior part of me seeing the, uh, and Richard Bandler sobbed. A grown man cried. Another man was defeated. And another man who had love and compassion for both of them gave those two men so much of his love because a part of him wished that his work wasn't so expansive that he couldn't have given it to those two men. If there were any two men on the planet he wanted to give it to was those two men. And before they left, left they asked if they could come back again right? And uh, Moshe said, you can come back again, but my opinion won't change. He knew what they were doing. 
they did it so exquisitely well, NLP with him and Ericksonian with them. Moshe was masterful and his judo in him held him firm to the ground, but with the ability to be moved in all cardinal directions in the conversation, it was obvious, it was clear. When they left, I sat with Moshe and talked with him. I just asked him, I didn't talk, I asked him, tell me more. And he says, I love those two men, but it would have taken the work in a different direction. And this work is still new. And there are many more trainings to come from this. And I said to him, but they could have expanded this work so fast. He go, and his response was nothing about this work is about expanding it fast. So when practitioners complain, why couldn't we market the Feldenkrais method really fast and get it out there really fast? This isn't about that. Development happens over time. Self-growth happens over time. And there's a word in Hebrew that is savlanut. It means patience. You have to have patience for development. And in humankind, it takes us time. And he knew that in this work, it won't be fast. But in the long run, if we keep it going, it'll be greatly appreciated. And I would say, thanks to the Feldenkrais Guild of North America, thanks to the International Guild, and thanks to Cynthia Allen for creating her online summit that allows so many people to have the experience. Thanks for all the practitioners who go out there and teach the work. They're doing what Moshe was hoping we would do. So, kind of makes me think of the song you can't always get what you want and that day there were two grown men that were used to figuring out how they could get what they wanted they taught how to teach people how to get what they wanted with ethics and morals but even those two the top in the field didn't get what they wanted there's a story behind that because there's growth. It's something for you all to think about. It doesn't always happen fast, but it happens. And for that, I'm thankful.